Welcome to the Soil Health Institute's fifth annual meeting. We're so glad that you could join us. My name is Wayne Honeycutt, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving as the president and CEO of the Soil Health Institute. We have over 2,200 people participating today, which tells me that many of you are attending for the first time. So I think a short introduction to the Soil Health Institute might be in order. The Institute is a nonprofit. We were established back in 2015 by the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation and the Farm Foundation. These are the two longest serving agricultural foundations in the United States. One was established in 1933 and I believe the other in 1945. The mission of the Institute is to safeguard and enhance the vitality and productivity of soils through scientific research and advancement. And that word advancement means many things to us. It means advancing information like on the economics of soil health, on the, right down onto the ground, boots on the ground efforts, working directly with farmers on their adoption too. To meet that mission, uh, we work with a lot of different stakeholders to identify the gaps that exist in research and adoption. We develop strategies and networks, uh, partnerships and funding uh, to address those gaps. And then we work to ensure that all those investments have a beneficial impact for agriculture, the environment, and ultimately to society. We take a real comprehensive approach for advancing soil health and I'll tell you a lot more about that uh, a little bit later on in the program. So first, I think let's, let's get started here. Uh, because I, this is a virtual meeting, I think it would probably be helpful to all of us to kind of get to know uh, who's in the room. So Warren, if you could please show us the map. Great. And then maybe if you could show us kind of the distribution, the, the list of all the states, I mean the countries that are there. Now, I think, you know, that's really informative. It's quite, quite exciting, <laughs> uh, but I think it would also be helpful to kind of know uh, not only where everybody is from, but it'd be also nice to know a little bit about one another. So maybe Warren, if you could uh, pull up our first poll, please. So we've got a couple of questions here. If you could please list your, just click on the dot, the, your primary occupation. And then the second question is that if uh, you click something other than farmer or rancher, but that you do farm or ranch part time, if you could also please, please let us know that. And then you can just click submit. I'm going to wait a few seconds, let people come up with their answers. And then we'll tally it up. That way we'll all know kind of who's in the room together around the world. Okay, Warren, if you could give us the results, please. Okay, it looks like about half of us are scientists. A uh, real strong showing of kind of field conservationists and consultants. Um, only about 1% are farmers and ranchers. But a lot of the work, of course, that we do is directly for them. About 1% funders food and beds companies, other. Looks like I missed one of the categories when we got 18% other. I probably should have come up with one or two other categories. So sorry about that. Okay. And then maybe if you could see, looking at the rest of it, the rest of the second question, if you pick something other than farmer ranching, do you also farm and ranch part-time? Another 27% said yes. That's kind of as I expected. I expected that a number of people would not be farming full-time, but that a lot of people in this area, because of their 
dedication to the land and the environment, uh, they also farm part time. So that, that's really, really helpful. Thank you. Well, I, I hope that uh, information is, is useful to you. I really appreciate everybody. Thank you all for participating in it. I think it's probably good for all of us to kind of know who's in the room, uh, particularly uh, when we have such a, a breadth of people around the world uh, that, that's participating today. So seeing that so many of you have joined us from around the world, it's not only exciting, but it's also inspiring, uh, really, because we're all in this together. We have one earth that we all share together. And so it's truly uplifting to see so many engaged uh, that are really interested in improving the health of our soils globally. We know our challenges are global and they're very significant. We know that the highest level of CO2 ever recorded in the atmosphere was recorded just last year. We know from ice core data, tree ring data, coral reef data, that our global temperature is the highest it's been over the last 10,000 years. We know that hypoxic zones and eutrophic areas occur in water bodies all over the world. And increasingly, the spotlight is focused on agriculture as a source of a significant amount of those nutrients. We know that any, at any given time, approximately 1% of the world's arable land is experiencing drought. But our models predict that this will increase to over 30% by the year 2100. Now think what that will do to our ability of future generations to not only grow their food, but also to be able to afford it. And think of what that level of drought would mean to the wildlife that we share this planet with, and to which we also have a responsibility. So that brings me really to the theme of this year's meeting, soil health, the foundation for regenerative agriculture. Now let me say something here. The science is clear. We know we can address these challenges I described by improving soil health. We can significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We can increase carbon sequestration, reduce nutrient losses to our waterways, all by using practices that also help farmers. It helps farmers build drought resilience, increases nutrient availability, can help them improve nutrient use efficiency, suppresses pathogens, increases yield stability. And we're learning now most recently, some of our evidence also really increases profitability. So to achieve some of these benefits, we need to do our job to address farmers' needs in a scientifically sound way so they can use the information we provide with confidence. So our agenda today and tomorrow covers both the science and the adoption of that science. All of you have been provided a copy of the agenda, and I, I would also encourage you to visit the video poster sessions. In particular, at tomorrow's video poster session, you'll be able to select a topic that's of most interest of you, and then go into a Zoom room and interact with the presenter of your choice after listening to the presentation or the three-minute video of your choice. Now, a little bit of housekeeping here on the Zoom platform that we're using. Before we get going, I just kind of want to offer a little bit of information on the platform itself. If you do need technical support, please uh, submit your question in the Q&A tab located at the bottom bar of the screen, and a team member will respond to you. If you're experiencing problems with your internet bandwidth, you've got two options, basically. Uh, call in and just listen to the presentation, or because the talks are being recorded, you could also wait and view the presentations once they're posted on the Institute's website in about a week. If you do decide to call in and just listen, the call-in numbers are in the same email as the link that you received for joining the meeting. Lastly, if you can use the Q&A for asking questions to most speakers. Uh, you can also vote on other participants' questions to really help our moderators gauge the level of interest to having a particular question answered. So let's get rolling.